Bob, of course, one of the big things you want to do, especially when you're playing on the road, is get off to a good start. And boy, did your club get off to a great start in Bowling Green. Yeah, it was the second week in a row. Um, we were able to, to start fast and, and score uh, early. Uh, you know, the first drive uh, being a 99-yard drive uh, was a kind of a statement drive that I think uh, helped our confidence uh, for the rest of the, the football game. And then your special teams gets involved right away and, and gets a fumble recovery for you to set up another touchdown. Yeah, it was something that our special teams coordinator saw on film uh, that uh, – you know, we felt we might be able to get uh, get the ball on the ground with the sky kick, and we did. And uh, kids with a great hustle play uh, uh, ended up getting the ball back. And anytime you can get short field uh, against uh, good football teams is an advantage, and we took advantage of uh, the short field situation and, and uh, helped us get that early lead. And your defense was outstanding in that first half, a couple of quarterback sacks, and even when they didn't get to the quarterback to sack him, pressure, and I think pressure really is what led to that end zone, the, Doug, the, the interception that Doug Lewis had in the end zone. Yeah, our defense, uh, you know, we, we got him in a position where um, we got him behind in the scoreboard, and also at times we're able to get him behind uh, the sticks as far as first down, and when we did that, I really thought we did two things well. We we put uh, uh, some consistent pressure on a quarterback, and and then the other thing was uh, that that we covered pretty well, and um, um, the combination of those two things uh, made it uh, difficult for them to to get the big play capability in their offense going. Yeah, and for them to complete less than forty percent of their passes speaks volumes to how well you were covering them in the secondary. Yeah, that that's uh, you know I. I, I Said all along that I think that's one of the strengths in our football team, the experience that we have at cornerback, and and they played against some very talented uh, receivers this last week, and uh, not only held up very well, but uh, I think uh, um, at, at, you know made made a statement for how well they're capable of playing. When you get a big lead on the road like that, does it seem like the clock just all of a sudden goes into slow motion at some point? <laughs> Well, you know, one of the things that we talked about last year is uh, <clears throat> that we had to get better at is is being more consistent uh, uh, offensively and and uh, uh, being in a position where we do a better job of when we do have leads, uh, closing games out. And and uh, um, you, uh, you know, you wish the clock would run faster, <laughs> um, but. Uh, at the same time, I think the two things that came out there is when Bowling Green, uh, when we turned the ball over and Bowling Green got a, a short field possession and they kind of creep their way back uh, into uh, the game, you know, we put together a, a 75-yard drive um, and put another touchdown on the board, which created uh, separation back in the score, uh, scoreboard. And then on our next drive, uh, held the ball for almost uh, for a little over five minutes um, and really worked the clock. Uh, actually, had the ball almost ten minutes of the fourth quarter. So, a couple of things that uh, um, you know helped us close that game out. Uh, talk about eleven penalties. Obviously, that number's too high for you. Yeah, you know that's one of the disappointing things. Um, you know, it was a um, it was a, a spirited game in many regards and. You know, we we had 11 penalties for uh, whatever it was, 90 yards, and they had 150 yards mm-hmm. in penalties. And you know, a couple of those penalties we'd like to have back. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we had a couple of holding calls and, and even a couple of procedure calls that uh, uh, that uh, put us in off schedule situations on a couple of drives early in the in the um, uh, second half when we were actually moving the ball pretty well. And those are the kind of things that we've got to avoid. Too, too many negative plays uh, put you in, in uh, uh, bad situations to keep drives alive. Another great performance by Chris Strebler. And, Coach, you and I have talked before about people don't really fully appreciate it. Last year, here's a guy that didn't have spring ball last year coming in to a brand-new system. And, of course, he's got this tremendous amount of talent. And he really was just kind of learning it as he was going along. And we were seeing glimpses of it throughout the year last year. Now... You add in his talent plus his knowledge now of this system, and you're seeing how it translates on the field for him. Yeah, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, he's seen things better. Um, you know, he's a, he's a, been a student of the the offense and, and a student of the the game of football now for over a year, and he's making really good decisions uh, with the ball. And, and obviously, his athletic uh, his athleticism um it, you know can can uh, even be better when when he's seen things better and and uh, he showed that on on Saturday and played uh, an exceptional football game and 
you know, he's we, we need him to keep playing like that. He's he's a catalyst for us offensively and and uh, um, capable of of making a big play every time the ball's in his hands. And your depth at wide receiver has been a key this season. And again, once again, eight different guys catching passes for you. Yeah, Chris is doing a really good job of distributing the football and and the ability to for us to keep uh, fresh people. Uh, on the field, uh, I think, is an advantage. And so we're going to continue to, to rotate those guys um, and, uh, um, and uh, expect, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ball to, to be continually distributed uh, among the group. Mike Frederick, of course, has great speed, and he showed that off in this game, but also showed off his toughness as well. He had some tough, tough yards that he picked up, five yards of carry. I thought Mike played well. Um, you know, I think he's he's capable of playing in even better. I think as the game went on, he saw things better. Uh, had a nice run on the touchdown, and and uh, in the fourth quarter there, that that kind of uh, um, you know was the ended up being the the, the winning touchdown. And um, we need to get more production out of that position group. Uh, and I think uh, uh, with Mike and the younger guys there, uh, we will as the season goes on. And, of course, we got to give credit to the offensive line because a lot of this stuff wouldn't happen if they weren't getting the protection and opening up the holes up front. Yeah, you know, we made a couple mistakes, uh, but really thought that we cleaned some things up uh, uh, from the first week against Drake and certainly understood that we were playing a, a higher level of competition. And and, uh, and now that group uh, just got to continue to make that kind of improvement week by week. Let's talk about North Dakota now. You finally get your home opener on Saturday, and it just it doesn't feel like a non-conference game, maybe because next year it's not going to be a non-conference game. When you talk about UND, you got two top 25 teams. you got two teams familiar with each other, which played a heck of a game last year up in Grand Forks. You've got your uh, relationship with, with Bubba Schweigert. I mean, this really is a, a different feel than just another non-conference game. Yeah, it's a it's a great non conference rivalry that's in a in a couple of years here is, is going to be a, a conference rivalry yeah. and and um, you know they're I have a lot of respect uh, for the for that staff and they're doing a great job uh, it's a team that's exceptionally well coached they're different uh, than uh, uh, than other teams we play in the valley with what they do defensively and and even to a certain extent what they do offensively and they've got uh, very talented players they've got a lot of experience and obviously a team that was in the national playoffs a year ago. And that defense opened up a lot of eyes, Coach. I mean, they went against a Missouri State team that, that put up a lot of points on Missouri, and they shut them out. Yeah, they're they're capable of doing that. Uh, they're extremely multiple on defense. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're going to come at you from all different directions, and, and uh, you really have to to uh, uh, be consistent with your execution and, and do a good job of, of trying to recognize uh, what they're, they're throwing at you from, uh, from a pressure standpoint and in front standpoint and movement standpoint. Um, so that'll be a real challenge for us uh, uh, from an uh, uh, offensive standpoint uh, to be able to, to execute with consistency against them. And they're forcing turnovers. They forced three against Missouri State, and they've had six sacks in two games. And they're doing it with four starters that are just sophomores. Yeah, you know their their system is uh, is built around guys that uh, that run very well and putting pressure on a quarterback. And and uh, uh, so you know we'll have to make sure that uh, that we're sound in what we're doing protection wise, and what we're sound in what we're doing in the run game, and. And uh, um, and cre- create some opportunities to to make some big plays ourselves. Nine starters back on offense. Let's start with uh, Keaton Studs, who the quarterback. He's completed about sixty percent of his passes, threw a couple of touchdown passes against you guys last year, and also ran the ball thirteen times as well. So you got to respect his his ground game as well. Yeah, he's a he's a dual threat quarterback, um, a guy that's a very dangerous runner, <clears throat> and I think uh, like Chris, uh, a guy that's improved as a passer uh, from last year to to this year, as you would expect uh, a senior uh, quarterback as that's a returning starter would have uh, would have done. Um, you know, he he and the the running back combination that they have are certainly give them a, a tremendous amount of threats offensively. You talked about the running back. Santiago is a guy you did see a lot last year. He ran it for 140 yards against you. Oliveira, you didn't see him much. He just had a limited game against you, but he ran for 164 yards against Missouri State, so they got a couple of guys capable of carrying the ball. Yeah, it's a great combination. Uh, they're different styles of runners, but both very talented runners. And 
and like uh, you know any uh, um, any defensive game plan, you know that's what you have to do against North Dakota. Is you you have to be uh, you have to have a plan that limits uh, their ability to to run the football and and put them in situations where you can. Uh, make them uh, more one-dimensional because when they're able to to run the football effectively, they're they're a very good offensive football team. How much of your scouting will be the two games they've had this year, and how much of it will be the matchup you had head to head with them last year? Well, it's always a combination of both. When you've played a team um, in the past, uh, um, you know both of us are doing similar things, both offensively and defensively, and. And so from a standpoint of getting ready, we've got to make sure that uh, we have things that uh, um, that we feel uh, we can execute from an offensive standpoint and, and on the defensive standpoint, uh, hopefully do a few things better than we did a year ago. And i got to imagine you and your coaching staff and your players have got to be excited to finally be at home. Yeah, it seems, uh, you know, when you play the first two weeks on the road and and not only that, but playing two night, night games mm-hmm. on the road, it it really makes for a long start of the season. And, uh, and our guys uh, love playing in the Dome uh, and uh, having uh, an opportunity to bring in a quality opponent like uh, North Dakota is uh, is an exciting time for our football team and our football program.